Hi, my name is Connor. Uh, this app is called Mentor Matcher. It's a mentor matching service to encourage mentorship and software development. This app is continuously deployed. It's a full stack Mern app. The deployment link is mentor-matcher with no e dot herokuapp.com. Uh, some of the new technologies I was curious about for this project were Socket.io and Stripe primarily and a couple others that I'll mention along the way. We're going to get started here as a test user creating a new account. We're utilizing Passport for our authentication here in the Google strategy there. Uh, all the routes in the app are dynamic and responsive to the status of the user, um, meaning their authentication status and also uh, if their account has completed uh, account setup. So if we go to any other routes right now and our account's not been set up with that form, we're going to be redirected back to the form. If I submit the form as is, I see that there's some required fields here, so we're going to go ahead and set those user preferences. We're going to add our interests here. We can remove an interest uh, that we did not mean to add. We can upload an avatar for our account. If we don't upload one, one will, a default will be provided. And we also have the option to drag and drop an image right in there. Uh, we're going to create that account. I have the option here to edit my account that'll take us back to that form and I can edit our account preferences. The next step would be to go over to our matches page. Uh, here we can see some other users that meet all of our preference criteria, meeting at least one day, one interest, one and one topic of availability uh, all match with that user. And then if we picked mentor, obviously we're only going to be presented with mentees here. So I'm going to go ahead and send a request to connect with this user here. And then I'll switch over to that other account over here so we can see um, that request. We're going to log in again with our authentication strategy and go back to our matches tab here and see if we see a new match from our new user, Jane Doe. All right, we do. We see the uh, Jane Doe's profile card here. We're going to go ahead and accept her request. Now when we go over to our connections tab, I'll see Jane Doe listed as a connection. And in Jane Doe's account, I'll see that new user as well. Um, here is where I first implemented Socket.io. Uh, I created a chat between users of the app. Uh, they're all in their own room. In the future, I would like to encrypt the chat. And there's also chat logs for uh, former chats with uh, connections you already have. Uh, here's some from testing, as you can see. Uh, another technology I was curious about was Stripe. So um, Stripe has been integrated into the project. Uh, this is the Stripe card element right here. Uh, we can enter in a test card. Obviously, if I don't complete the form, there's some form validation, so we'll go ahead and put in a valid Stripe test card. We'll add the card, we'll see that payment addition was successful, and then we can um, pay for a subscription, um, and we'll see that was a success. So we're gonna go back now to our connections. We have our um, test user here, Jane Doe. So in addition to the chat and tipping with Stripe, we have the option to pair program. That's gonna take us to another socket room that's created for the two users. Um, the editor you see here is called React, sorry, not React, it's Ace Editor, obviously implemented in a React project, um, but it is another socket room, so we'll see those live updates from the other user. Uh, we can broadcast different events to the room, like a theme change, or we can adjust the um, formatting for the language within the editor. Um, something I was curious about for this project was sandboxing JavaScript. I looked at a couple different tools for that. One of them was Google Closure. I looked at Babel standalone. Uh, I ended up using Node's uh, virtual machine module. So that's what's going on in here. So one of our um, code challenges that we have loading up as a default option to work on is uh, a bit counter. So we have the solution here. We're going to go ahead and add the solution in and see if we can evaluate and get a return. All right, so we do. We see that our count bits, func count bits function is returning 12, which is exactly what it should be doing. Um, also, we can add in you know, some nonsense to get an error here, and we'll see that we have an unexpected identifier. Um, there's also an admin dashboard for this app that is specific to an admin account. So on this site here, in this account, if I go in as my admin user, I'm granted access. I can set a time to life expiring database entry that will create a custom site-wide banner. And then now if I go back for each user, I should see that that um, banner is active for the site. Um, that's the, the basis, the foundation of this app. I hope that you enjoyed. Um, thank you so much for checking it out. Feel free to make an account. It is live. And um, my email should be available with how this video was shared to you. And uh, please reach out. Thank you so much.